Leveling up in the Cypher system works completely different and frankly more interesting than many other tabletop RPGs, especially the mainstream ones like 5th edition and Pathfinder. So here's me taking 5 minutes of your time to elaborate. Before we can talk about player advancement in the Cypher system, we need to talk about experience points, because experience points are an expendable currency, so to speak, in the Cypher system that you can use for two things, either short-term awesome stuff you can do as a character, even at level one, or long-term powers you get from leveling up. The Cypher system basically has a leveling system within the leveling system. Going up a level actually is called going up a tier. And on your character sheet, you will find an advancement tab with five boxes for you to tick. If you end up ticking four of these boxes in any order you please, you go up a tier and you gain the new powers for that tier from your focus, your type and your descriptor. In order to tick one of these boxes and gain the powers that one of these boxes gives, you need to spend four experience points. You gain experience points in the cipher system by doing awesome story stuff or bringing Cheetos to the table. From left to right, the first box is called Increased Capabilities, which gives you four points to spend on your might, your speed, or your intellect pool. I'm saying or, but it is actually and. You can spend these four points amongst whatever pools you want. If you're the kind of player who likes to use effort for about anything they do, the second box might be the first one you want to take, because it gives you one more edge to whatever ability you want, making sure that if you use effort, for example, for might, it becomes cheaper to use that effort so you can use it more. By the way, this is also awesome for wizards, for example, who use intelligence a lot and who use intelligence to spend towards casting spells, that becomes cheaper as well. Then there is the extra effort box for you to tick, which gives you an extra effort. Normally at tier 1 you only get to spend one level of effort per action. Now, it's two. Maybe you are the mechanic aboard a spaceship, or you are a rogue deep inside a dungeon, and you have 4 XP to spend. The fourth box might be really cool for you, because it is skill specialization. Now you can learn a new skill, like pick a lock, or, or dungeoneering, or find traps, or something like that. Or, maybe even more importantly, you can specialize into a skill that you already have. Basically, easing it twice. Then there is the other tab. Yes, there are five boxes for you to tick, but you only need to tick four in order to go up a tier. But this also gives you a few options for you to use for your character and become stronger. One of those is adding two to your recovery roll, which is a lot. You can take a new power from your type, or you can even uh, reduce the cost of wearing armor by one. It is important to state that you can only tick every box once per tier. Meaning that if you ticked four boxes and you go up a tier, you erase all of your ticks and you start from scratch. Now all there is left for you to do is checking your type, descriptor and focus to see what new abilities you get from going up a tier. And please don't forget to add one to your recovery roll, because your recovery roll is always 1d6 plus your tier. Now you can also choose to not ever level up in the cipher system. I don't recommend it, but it is a way you can play the game, because experience points can also be spent in more short-term effects. The more obvious one is just spending one experience points to re-roll any roll in the game. Not only the roll you make, but also a friend at your table. Even if a monster attacks you for a defense roll, you you can make that roll again if you spend 1 XP and you can keep re-rolling as much as you want but you'll be burning through your XP pretty quickly. Every now and then your game master will come with a GM intrusion, basically changing the world around you not to your benefit. You can accept this and get two experience points, one for yourself and one for a friend, or you can spend one experience point to refuse it. By spending two experience points, you can gain a very specific skill working with your game master, of course. But this skill needs to be super specific for the situation that you are in and for your character background. For example, you might be hacking into somebody else's laptop that uses a software that you helped develop. You can spend two experience points to actually be able to be better at hacking into this software that you helped develop, which makes sense for your character, for the situation and for the game. By spending 3 experience points you can get more long-term benefits, but it really takes some talking to your game master for doing this. For example, you can gain a contact in a village, you can gain a full-time residence in a village, even some basic wealth or even a title or a job. And most importantly, click the link in the pinned comment.